everyone it's Ross and I want to do this video for you guys showing you my new grow closet um, previously I've been doing a lot of rooting in this closet in previous years I've showed you guys a few videos now on rooting fig cuttings and kind of what to expect things to look out for um, but now we've done some upgrades and you can see that there's a lot of cuttings on the floor and that's what a lot of that video content was about the few cuttings I had on the floor we've done a lot more rooting now you know we've got a lot more pots in here a lot more bins in here we've set up a different lighting system because we added in these shelves you can see there's an extra extra shed, a set of wow extra set of shelves guys on the left side here and the right side and then we also have shelving at the top which we've had in previous years but this will be for starting seeds exclusively but because I've added this secondary shelf here it's freed up a lot of room I'm able to hang more lights in here increase the heat um, do all kinds of really nice things and I kinda just wanna show you guys that so these shelving here is pretty simple to hang make sure you guys get some brackets that are quite sturdy and you screw those brackets in with a drill very simply into the stud in the wall and this shelf isn't going anywhere it can easily with um, easily hold this this bin of uh, fig cuttings here and all that soil um, some other thing I want to mention is that in between the the shelf and the shelf above or even the shelf and the floor is about 30 inches I figure that if they're in these bins and they are grown in tree pots which is exactly how I like to grow them in these four by nine inch pots this is really nice for developing um, strong good root systems for fig cuttings I find that lots of figs that are grown from cutting they just don't go out vertically instead they love to go out horizontally so these pots kind of force them to go down the other great thing is that you can put a longer fig cutting in here and you can bury a lot more of the buds beneath the soil the more buds you have the more chances you have for roots at each of those nodes root formations can occur so by doing this and having a nine inch tall pot having the lighting system above I think you know the remaining space whatever that is in between here is, is a pretty good amount of size that these plants can attain before the spring um, rolls around if they get too tall which I'm kind of expecting they may actually get too tall you know some of these cuttings if you do them too early like I have done they can reach up to six feet tall if you're doing this right you know you're feeding them you're giving them the adequate light that they need adequate water these things can really grow especially because in my closet right now you can see on the thermometers I have in here extremely important for rooting or starting seeds you need to know the temperature you need to know the humidity right now in the closet it's 78 29 percent humidity when rooting fig cuttings I've talked about in previous videos you need the temperature between 70 and 80 degrees um, I prefer 75 and as you get higher your chances of rot increase so you want to keep things below 80 but you kind of want to keep things above 70 because if you're below 70 they're just not going to put out roots they're not going to grow they're not going to really do anything it's almost a waste of time so what I would recommend is again somewhere between 70 and 80 um, but when I close this door and what I want to mention is you know this is a closet I can close this door at any time um, when these fig cuttings root because there's kind of a race that happens between the bacteria that causes rot and the callusing that occurs these these fig cuttings guys when you make those cuts on them you cut the bottom make a new cut on the bottom you score the bark that's really great and that's something you need to do but what has to happen is that these cuttings have to callus over if they don't callus over they're not going to form roots and that new exposed wood can easily rot especially if the temperatures are too warm so there's a nice little race that happens and that race will I'm gonna let that happen you know I'm gonna probably lose a couple of these it's not a big deal but what I'm 
thinking is going to happen is that when I fill this whole room with cuttings, because I still have more bins to fill, I have more bins to add, you know, this bin I'm going to put up on this shelf and that bin's going to come down here. And I also need to get a fourth bin on the floor level. That way I'll have four bins on the floor, a bin up here and a bin over there, six bins for a total of 176 potential cuttings that I can root in this room. Now, once a month or so goes by, and I'm seeing really good growth, right? I'm looking at some of these cuttings that I've really just recently started to root. You can see they're putting out some nice growth. I don't know what the root mass looks like just yet, but I'm sure it's not a whole lot. But once a lot of these guys, I'm pretty confident that they have leafed out, they're putting out good root mass. What I'll do is I'm gonna close this door, and I'm going back to this, I'm gonna close the door and that's gonna keep a lot of the heat in this room. It's already warm as it is in here because I'm in the basement. Uh, our basement's very well heated. There's a lot of lights going on in here for 16 hours, 18 hours a day. I think it's 16 or 18 hours a day. And then all that heat is gonna get trapped in here. And this number from 78 degrees is gonna go way up. We're gonna get to probably 86. I'm expecting high 80s. And figs, if you've seen any of my videos, guys, you know that figs love the heat. The metabolisms of these trees will really start to get going, and I'll have a lot of growth on these trees. It may actually be too much, and I, um, I'm gonna have to probably take some of these out of here at that time. You know, I'll do a video on that if it comes to that. Obviously, I'll keep you guys updated on the growth of these things, but. You know, a lot of these cuttings in here that you see have rooted and put out some leaves. You know, these were started about two or three weeks ago. And then we have some down here that have only been in in their pots for maybe, you know, four to five days to, to a week. And these haven't really done anything. So this whole process takes a bit of time. Just be patient. You'll be rewarded. And what I the last thing I want to mention about just... You know, and I've, I've done this in previous videos, is that these trees, guys, these cuttings turn into large trees. So just don't do what I'm doing unless you've been doing this for years. Don't root 100 cuttings. Don't root 150, 200 cuttings. That's just a mistake. Um, but the last thing I want to mention here, because we've talked about the shelving, we've talked about the pots, um, you know, I didn't really touch on the soil, but it should be well draining. We're adding in a lot of this, uh, you know, these rice holes here. This is great for keeping out the fungus gnats. You can see I have a whole bin here of rice holes. Really, really great stuff. Um, like I said, well draining soil. I even have some, some fertilizer up here that I may consider using. I was originally gonna put down this organic stuff which is really nice because it has mycorrhizae in it, which is perfect for getting your plants started, getting that symbiosis process happening on the root systems of these trees. Um, it also is a slower release fertilizer that will give these guys a real nice, easy boost of fertilizer that these trees probably will need at some point throughout your winter project here. Um, we didn't really touch on the bins, but the bins are really nice. And, you know, if you have ever experienced these tree pots, they're not very sturdy, okay? These things really can easily topple over at any time. And I would just recommend that if you're gonna grow them in tree pots, there's like these trays that they come with or you can order separately. But a better situation, I think, is to use these bins because you're gonna be watering these. At some point in the season, in the winter time, you're gonna be watering these almost every day, um, I would expect. Um, you know, if they get enough leaf mass on them, it's quite dry in here, you're probably gonna be watering these almost every day. Um, you know, you really wanna make sure that the moisture is not dripping on the floor, right? The bins are great for that. You know, and the, the mulch here, the rice holes also is great for conserving that moisture. You know, it's such a dry, 29% humidity environment is this. It's really important. Um, the last thing I want to mention is these lights. And this is part of the new 
project that went on in this closet, not just the shelves, but these lights as well. I've recommended in the past getting these four foot long shop lights. It's really important um, that you have the right bulb, but I think the fixture is also somewhat important and you can kind of drive you insane because you don't really know what to get. Most people don't really know what they're doing and this is a bit daunting to start. You know, these are really inexpensive. I think they're about $16, if I'm not mistaken, at Lowe's. This is, it fits two bulbs, and this one up here, we're still waiting to hang. We're gonna replace these simple LEDs here. Um, but, you know, these come with two bulbs in it, in the fixture. Um, the bulbs you have to buy separately, but they're four foot long shop lights, and this is really what you're gonna have to settle with. This is, I mean, the, really the best and most inexpensive thing you're gonna be able to find what I would suggest is instead of getting two bulbs you have a bit more money you want to take this a bit more serious get yourself a four foot shop light that has four bulbs in it rather than two um, you can see right here that these bulbs don't really cover this whole section of the bin not only that but it's it's better to have more bulbs more energy that way for these leaves to photosynthesize um, so I think that's really your best bet, and it's it's really that simple. Just getting these shop lights, uh, you know, they're affordable, and they're they're easy to find. Um, you can get some that have ballasts in them that you have to hook up, or you can have some that are just plug and play. Um, what I would recommend that you pay close attention to in this video right now is the bulbs. The bulbs don't really matter if it's fluorescent or T8 or T12 or uh, LED. The main thing with the bulb here is that it has to have the right color temperature. Um, now if we were growing these plants down here for fruiting purposes, we kind of want to mimic the color of the sun. I mean that's, in general, that's what we're doing with these lights, is we're mimicking the sun. And the sun puts out a whole different array of color spectrums and you know certain colors directly relate to growth and certain colors directly relate to fruiting and flowering and for me I'm just growing them I don't want them to fruit it'll be nice if they fruit for me in the spring in the summertime but for now I don't really care about that I just want them to grow so what I'm only concerning myself with is getting a color temperature a Kelvin rating of something somewhere in the middle and somewhere in the middle is about 4100 that's what you guys will find in the store that is frequently sold now you can find other bulbs on other crazy ratings you know other other crazy kelvin color temperatures um, but the ones you're going to really find in the store is like a high end is 6500 and on the low end is 2100 that's the bulbs you guys want to get you want to get both of those 2100 in one of the bulbs and 6500 in another one of the bulbs for this two uh, this two bulb fixture here you want to alternate the bulbs if you're using them as a four you know so 2100 6500 2100 6500 and then those colors those numbers that color temperature guys is going to help these trees or these plants whatever it is you're growing in here it's going to help them flower and help them fruit because they have the right color. Now for me, like I said, 4100 is perfect. They're not going to flower, they're not going to fruit, but they are going to grow. And that's what I want. And this was efficient for me. Uh, this was affordable for me. This is exactly what I wanted. Building this, the shelf, getting the brackets, getting these hooks to hang the lights on getting the light fixtures themselves, getting the light bulbs. Um, you know, it was all very affordable. Even getting the bins, I probably spent about $150 getting this whole setup you see right here. So it can be affordable and I, I certainly recommend you guys do this in some sort of uh, enclosed area, somewhere that it's not gonna bother a whole lot of people, somewhere that your wife's not gonna think you're crazy. Um, but this is a really nice way of doing it, I think, is making use of a, a closet that was doing nothing and then instead doing this. So 
Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. This was a little bit of an update to the grow closet and what is to come. I will certainly be updating you guys on more rooting that will be happening, the progress of these things, and if I had any successes or failures at the end of this. Um, so, alright guys, take care and I'll see you all soon.